morning everyone t-shirt video so today I'm gonna make a t-shirt right in front of you and I'm using this Pamela Leggett pattern the perfect t-shirt we have many t-shirt patterns um, I will show you those later the first thing you need to do is measure so get your tape measure and Pamela's patterns are designed for actual ladies of not 15 to 18 years old. They're designed for women of our age. So they have a slight forward shoulder adjustment. They're a little curvier. Um, and she goes by a high bust measurement. So let me show you how to measure that. You're gonna bring the tape measure under your arms and across the front, snug, all right? And then you're gonna measure so it's right under your arms, kind of straight across your back and snug, and you take that measurement, okay? So mine measures 36. And then you take your full bust measurement, and mine's 39. So there's three inches difference between my high bust and my full bust. And according to her pattern, that's right on the edge of needing a dart. I know I need a dart. Okay, so I'm gonna make the darted version. You can make the undarted version um, if you want something just more, a little bit looser fitting. See, this is a t-shirt that I did not make. And see what I'm getting here? I'm getting a little um, tuck there. This is begging for a dart. This is saying that my cup size is too big and um, my band size is too small for this shirt. Well, Okay, so yesterday I had on a shirt that I did make and it fit me fine. So, uh, but I didn't quite get to this point yesterday. So I'm going to show you how to trace a pattern. Now, I don't generally cut my tissue patterns because I like to preserve those sizes. Um, sometimes when we do classes and we do tissue fitting, we'll cut the tissue pattern but I usually will trace mine off, and I have the Swedish tracing paper. There's lots of different things you can use. Um, some people like to get, um, there, we have something called pattern ease. Um, you can use all kinds of stuff, but this is nice because you can, you can drape it, you can stitch scraps together, and it's very, very durable. Plus, you can see through it. So, my other thing that I like to do when I trace a pattern is Wherever you see a fold line, I fold my tracing material. So I like to have a whole pattern. I don't like to deal with half patterns. I find that doing this saves me so much time in the long run that, and I'm using a pinnable mat so I can pin right into it and then I'll use a rotary cutter to cut this pattern out. I use scissors sometimes, sometimes I use rotary cutters, depending on what the situation is. But if you're gonna cut um, patterns with a rotary cutter, get this little size. This is the smallest one, I think it's 18 millimeters. And it's just super easy to get around the curves. Now for fabric, I go one size up, I think it's 28 millimeters, because to get through the fabric, the 18 is a little bit small. So it's okay to have more than one tool. That's okay. Go look at your husband's workbench. Um, okay, so I pinned into the pattern. My tracing material is folded, and that fold is placed on the fold line of the pattern. All right? Now, this is where rulers come in super, super handy. I usually have three that I use. I've got this... Um, curved ruler. This is a 5-8 seam allowance ruler as well. So if you're going to do any um, tissue fitting, you can mark your seam allowance with this if it's a 5-8. Plus it also has um, quarter marks or eighth marks on it. And then I have a French curve and a hip curve. Okay. Um, so these are the ones that I generally use. The hip curve is super nice if you're going to be, if you're like, I'm taller, so I need to elongate a lot of stuff. So this is a nice gentle curve for a hip line. Okay. Um, the French curve gives you your um, your other curves that are found in fashion, all right? Um, usually, if I'm doing something where I'm moving a dart or something like that, I can find the curve on one of these three rulers. So 
So this has got more of an armhole curve. Pamela has a similar ruler to this. It's called um, the Curvy Ruler. That's a nice one too. So I'm I like to use these to help me trace. So according to my measurements, I'm gonna do the small. I'm gonna do a small with a dart. Now I'm on my back right now, um, tracing the back. This is the back of the t-shirt. And if you look at the size range, I'm at the high end of the small, that's 34 to 36. I think I'm gonna go out to a medium for the hip because I know that my hips are bigger than my um, bust when it comes to patterns. So I'm gonna go with my ruler onto the medium line at the hip line. It's gonna get a little closer here. So I'm on the medium line and I'm just gonna start tracing and then I'm gonna go up to the small line. See, I can use that ruler, I can flip it and get my small line and then I'm gonna make those two meet. Move my pen. So see how having that ruler, see how it helps me make that curve in and then I can turn it and make those two lines meet without having a, a rough edge. So now I've got a nice smooth curve from the small out to the medium hip. And I think the length on this, um, let's see what the length is on the back of this. I like my t-shirt's a little bit long. 27, I'll probably put a small hem in it. That should be long enough. Yep, I'm good. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this as it is on the pattern. And I wanna make sure what happens is on patterns that have a fold, they don't put a green line in. So I wanna make sure and write it at a grain line, because they're assuming that your fold line will be your grain line. You have to have a grain line. And then Pamela gives you another nice option in that she gives you the ability to make your um, armhole a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, depending on how much weight you carry in your arms. So we all know that sometimes um, you have a little bit more arm than other people do. Some have more, some have less. So I am going to shorten this armhole because I like my sleeve to fit me a little bit tighter under my arm. And she has a line here to shorten that. Instead of cutting and taping, what I do is I'll draw the lower line. And so I've got my armhole here. I've got notches I need to mark in here as well. I'm going to unpin and I'm just going to scoot this up to the upper line. Ooh, one more pin. You see what I just did? I just moved that pattern from this lower line. Give you a little more. There's two lines here. Can you see it? Let's see. This line is the shorten and lengthen line. So I'm going to move from, I trace this line and I'll just scoop my whole pattern up to this line and that will automatically shorten that armhole. And I'll do the same thing on my sleeve and on the front. Okay, so I'm lining up that fold line again, repinning my pattern. so things don't shimmy around. Now this pen is a laundry marking pen. I recommend using a permanent laundry marking pen when you're tracing patterns because you don't want things to transfer onto your fabric. So see how I can kind of run this ruler along. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm lining up this ruler onto the, the line of the sleeve and then I'm just kind of scooting it out a little bit so that as I 
blend those lines together, I have the same angle on my sleeve line so that my sleeve will still fit perfectly. And trace all around. I'm just not super good at um, tracing a smooth line without an edge to follow. So that's why I find the rulers to be super helpful. And I do a lot of shortening and lengthening. So it helps to have, you know, when you're or grading in and out from size to size, because my top is, my bottom is bigger than my top. So I always have to go to a larger size on the bottom. I did down here, it's not super smooth. See what I said? Didn't use my ruler. Okay, so there's my back. And now what I'll do is I'll take my rotary cutter and I'll cut this pattern out because I want to take the paper pattern out from underneath or we'll be having a little disaster. The nice thing about using a rotary cutter to cut this out is when you use scissors, sometimes you end up um, grating that edge unintentionally because it lifts the fabric or the the tracing material, whatever it is you're cutting a little bit. And so the beauty of using the rotary cutter is that you're cutting flat. I do pin it though, so things don't scoot. And I don't put a ruler next to this to do this. I have two layers, so I want to make sure the layers are cut together like that. There's my back with the shortened armhole. Okay. And of course, label your patterns. What size did you make? What pattern is it? Um, it's no fun finding mystery pattern pieces laying around that you don't know what they are. And you don't realize what they are until you go to use that pattern again. He's like, oh yeah, that's what that was. Okay, now I'm gonna do my front. So this is the darted front. And again, I'm gonna fold my tracing material. that I'm tracing a full front, especially with the fabric that I'm using, has a herringbone type pattern to it. So I wanna make sure that I am straight across and up and down. And I don't know about you, but I find trying to fold fabric, especially knits, straight, to get them so that you can cut your pattern on the fold, so you cut your fabric, your garment out on the fold. I find that maddening to try to get everything together and even, especially if there's any kind of a pattern to it that's gotta be straight. I would much rather spend the time and the money and the extra tracing material to cut a full pattern so that I can see what I'm doing and especially if you have anything that might have, you know, a larger design on it, when you lay that front out unfolded onto a piece of fabric, it's amazing what you'll what you'll catch. Um, you know, as a po you know, if you have something with flowers or something, seeing where those flowers are going to fall on your body, you see what I'm saying, can sometimes be a big um, Money, save, money and time saver when you're like, oh, wait a minute, do I really want that there? All right, 
right, so again, I'm doing a medium hip on the bottom of this front. I'm also going to show you how to move this dart because I'm sure that I'm going to have to move this dart down. Gravity has definitely done a number. on the girls. So I'm tracing that dart. It's a small on the top. So now I'm going to ease that line out to be, I'm going to come this way. So this, I love this ruler because I can just flip it back and forth and get the curve that I need. Just kind of ease it in. So there's my small at the bust and at the shoulder. And I, I usually do have a smaller shoulder. I mean, the problem with being fuller busted is that oftentimes we'll have to buy a bigger size than we need to accommodate our bust, but then the shoulders and everything is so, and the sleeve is so huge on us. I mean, you can have a very large, you know, if, you, if your cup size is big, you can have a very large bust and be very small framed. So the nice thing about Pamela's patterns is that she measures from high bust, and that way you're getting the right size for your frame, okay? And the same is true in the opposite. You can have a um, very small bust and be larger in the back, or you know you might carry weight under your arms. And as long as you know that, and you can accommodate that, then you'll do the undarted version and a larger size. I do a smaller size in the darted version because you know um, it is what it is. Okay, so there's my. Bust. Where's my dart? There we go. And there, I'm gonna draw my dart in. There's the straight edge of this. I don't want a curved dart. Not for this. There are shaped darts, but not on this. Okay. Again, I'm gonna draw in my. Um, I need a straight ruler. Just to draw my green line so it's perfectly parallel to the center front. There's my front, small bust, medium hip. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Okay, so I'm glad I'm doing this on camera. I forgot to shorten my armhole. So I'm gonna redraw this. I'm gonna draw this bottom line again, like I did on the first part, on the back. And I'm gonna scoot it up. So that is shortening that armhole. So then I just have to redraw the, redraw the top part of my front. And depending on how much stretch your fabric has, I have found there are times when I have to shorten this armhole even more. I'm just going to redraw the small. Neckline. Sure. Get that nice and straight. I made it, um, and I don't 
don't remember. It was a fabric that we got from a jobber. And, you know, you take a chance sometimes with those. Everything else looks good here. So now I've shortened that armhole. Just had to redraw that neckline. Um, <clears throat> and it wasn't printed straight. So I couldn't get it straight this way and this way. And it was a very large, almost like an aztec -y, like an E-cat um, print. I'll take that pattern away so I can cut this out. And I struggled with that. Oh my gosh. I mean, I must have taken it in and it didn't have good stretch recovery. I should have just known. I should have just taken that bolt of fabric and said, and I did, I took it off the shelf. Once I tried to use it and it didn't work out well, I'm like, ooh, you know, sometimes you take a chance. Um, I try to make sure our fabrics are all top quality. I always do a wash test, make sure they're not gonna shrink crazy, and if they do, if I find that it's just something that I love so much, I'm, it's worth it. <clears throat> I mark the bolt, and I, I let people know what's going on. So, but this piece, I mean, I, I stretched and tweaked, and I just could not get that straight. And finally, it just went into the trash. Because I was so angry at it by the time I was done, even if I could have worn it, you know, as a little nightgown, it was a little dress. I hated it so much by that point, I never wanted to see it again. So everyone has those projects that just do not go well. I do love these pinnable mats. They're not self-healing, but rotary cutting with um, garment sewing, I wouldn't use this for my quilting, but rotary cutting for garment sewing, you don't put as much wear and tear on it as you do for quilting. So, you know, you have these nice grids. scissors. Okay. Little tags. There we go. Okay. So now before I do anything else, I'm going to turn this over and mark that dart on the other side. Oops. that dart marked on both sides. So if I'm cutting single layer, I have the markings that I need on both sides. Okay, there's my front. Now I just might need my sleeve. So, like I said, there's two versions of the front. There's a darted and undarted for Pamela's pattern. And the nice thing about her patterns also is that, um, oh, the same thing with the notches, marked on both sides of the front and back, your sleeve notches. I'll label those later. 
Okay, are the sleep smile for patterns or interchangeable? So if you want to use the sleeve from one pattern with another pattern, that will transfer right over. Now I have to make sure that I shorten, see the line? That I shorten the sleeve like I shortened the bodice. Okay. Don't let me forget. Don't leave your pins laying around. Make sure, no, I don't know why. Make sure that when you're sewing, I've got a few flower head pins here. I find sometimes I use those to pin into these mats because they're a little easier to grab onto, but use the glass head pins um, for your garment sewing. So that if you, and the zircal is super helpful for keeping track of your pins. Keeps all those heads kind of pointed out so you're not having to grab into a big mound of pins. So your sleeve should be traced the same size as the upper part of your bodice. So since I did, that my bust was a small, my sleeve will be a small. Makes sense, right? Now sometimes people have to do a different size shoulder than bust. I will test, I'll try this on and fit it as I go. I'll show you that. Um, just to double check the shoulder because the different stretches of different fabrics will affect how the shoulder fits. So I'm tracing a small sleeve cap um, and I'm going to trace just the top of the sleeve cap and then I will move this down to shorten it. So you can See how I switch around my rulers depending on what I'm doing. This ruler has that sharper curve I need for the sleeve cap. Mark my notch. And then I'm gonna slide this right down to um, actually first I'm gonna trace in the gar the grain line so that I make sure I slide it straight. Slide it right down to that shortened line, the lower line, so that now I'm shortening that sleeve cap. My green line's still lined up, so I can repin it. And I don't like a super long sleeve. I don't want my sleeve too long. This one's pretty good. Um, might even be a little longer than I usually would wear. I usually wear a fairly short sleeve, um, but if it's tighter like this, it's fine for me. I don't like a floppy, big floppy sleeve, but that's just me. That's the beauty of sewing. You can make it exactly the way you want it. So now I'm gonna take this line from the sleeve cap and bring it out to the small sleeve line. Now you could trace the full long sleeve and then fold it up. I'm gonna mark my notches in here. So there's um, three sleeve lengths on this pattern. There's the short sleeve, there's the three quarter length sleeve, and there's a the long sleeve. You know, that's, you gotta measure your arm. So you need to know what that is before you get started. I'm doing a short sleeve, so I'm just gonna trace the short sleeve. I find it easier for me to have separate sleeve patterns. I mean, I have traced a full sleeve and just folded it up, but and it always end up, when I'm cutting my short sleeve, I end up chopping the pattern, so it ends up being a short sleeve anyway. So over the years I've learned, just trace two patterns, it's fine. Um, so she actually has a mini sleeve length on here just read that. I thought that was a short and lengthened line. Um, she has a short, so I'm gonna do her, her mini sleeve length. 
And you can also, if you like a really short sleeve, you can curve this up to be kind of a, I like that look. So I think I am gonna do that on this. I'm gonna take this curve and curve it up a little bit because what I'm gonna do on this T, so now I've taken that sleeve and I've kind of curved it up so it'll go a little bit longer under the arm and then up and over my arm. Um, I'm gonna trim the sleeve instead of hemming it, which I'll show you. Because I'm doing a little bit of a different design element on this t-shirt for, just add a little something something. So I'm just gonna rough cut the sleeve since it's not on the fold. I don't need to cut it out perfectly. I can just cut kind of around it. And then when I cut my fabric, I'll cut on the line. The others I had to cut on the line because it, they were folded. I had to get that full pattern. Roll up my paper. Try not to be too messy. Tend to be a very messy sewer. Okay, done tracing. Now, Pamela also has a ton of YouTube videos that will explain, you know, her instructions are short. But there are YouTube videos to support the patterns, okay? So if you feel like you're not getting enough information, you've got to go to the pattern, to the YouTube videos, okay? And I'm going to just put this out of the way and get my fabric. Okay, so I'm with my pen. Now I'm using this beautiful, oh, I wish you could feel it. This is an art gallery knit. It's just so soft. And it, see, it's got this little herringbone. So this is a great example of where I wanna cut single layer. If I cut double, how long would it take me to get this fabric folded and lined up so if I had to do it like this and get all the lines straight on the, oh wait, I gotta double check those to that direction too. Uh, it would take me forever. And at that point, I'm over it, right? So I'm gonna cut the back first. The rule with me in sewing t-shirts is I cut the back first. Because like my mother always said, you can make a front out of a back, you can't make a back out of a front. Now this is darted, so you really can't make a front out of a back anyway, but. So what I'm doing is I am looking at the underarm hole point, these two points, the arm, it's called the arm's eye point. Center that a little bit more. And I'm also looking at my grain line. And I should look at, let's make sure that when I, cause this, you know, knits do curl. Another reason I like to use the mat is I can pin into them and flatten them out. Um, but honestly, for this, I'm gonna use my scissors and I use these pattern weights for this. With the pattern tracing, I like to pin into the mat and trace. For cutting my fabric, I like to use the weights because I can shift things around if I need to. So my arm, underarm point is on the bottom of one of the gray stripes. So I am straight, make sure I'm on the same stripe all the way across, go down a little bit, so that when I cut my front, and I always check the bottom edge as well, make sure I'm straight across. And sometimes they're not knitted perfectly straight, so you want to printed because most of the knits are printed, not knit with the pattern. They're printed. Let's see, you don't see the knit on pattern on the back. They're printed. Um, and sometimes you have to make a decision. Visually, what is going to be the thing that's going to draw your eye? What's the visual 
straight. Um, usually it's the up and down, okay? So if you have a very bold print, you have to look at it and say, okay, if it's a very bold horizontal stripe, then yes, use the horizontal stripe. If it's a vertical, use the vertical. If it's a very um, bold vertical print. So you gotta kinda use your head and say what is going to be what draws your eye. And that looks good. Looks good to me. So I'm gonna cut my back out. My Kai scissors, best thing ever. I just ordered some of the serrated blade. Gosh, I hope I ordered those. Um, and those are supposed to be just the best for knits and sheer things because they help you. But the Kai scissors, if you're gonna invest in a piece of equipment, invest in these, best thing ever. Um, I just sent a bunch back to be sharpened, my cutting table scissors, and they will send them right back to me. I think they charge seven bucks, and they come back like brand, brand new. And they're super fast too. You're always better off cutting with your scrap to your left. I'm just trying not to stand in front of the lens of the camera. So I'm cutting a little backwards here. But you will always be more accurate if you cut with your scrap to your left. So I should come up and cut this way, but I can't move everything while I'm filming. Knits are forgiving. You know, it's just, it's not quite exactly right. You just stretch it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna clip my notches. So when you make your header notches, don't cut them out. Do a tiny little clip. Tiny, tiny. There is my back. So, if I had cut a half pattern, I'd still be trying to straighten that fabric out and my back's all cut out. I'm gonna fold that pattern right up in it and pull my fabric over. A little bit of a crapshoot here because I'm hoping I have enough to get my sleeve out on the fold of the Middle, not. It's gonna be a very, very short sleeve. We'll see. I'm gonna go up as far as I can. Unroll that knit. Make sure I'm on on the edge. I'm on. Get my straight. So I'm going grain line first. Oh. All right, so let's move that dart. I'm gonna hold it up and see where the point of the dart is. Oh, actually, it might be okay. No, it's gotta move down. All right, my dart's gotta move down an inch. Let me show you how to move a dart. I need a scrap of Swedish tracing paper. A straight ruler and some tape. Okay, you're gonna draw a box around your dart. That's why I love this gridded mat. See, I can lay it right, the pattern right on the line and I know I'm straight. It gives me kind of a guide. I'm gonna draw a box around this dart. Three-sided. Okay. 
no exact measurements. Just make sure you encompass the whole dart. Okay? Box around my dart. And you want to cut. I'm moving this down. So I have to cut the top of the box. And the side of the box. Okay, so see what I've done? Box around my dart, cut this top and the side. Okay. I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna lower this an inch. So I'm gonna mark a line an inch below my box. And I am just gonna fold this down. You have to cut that down to there. Make my line on the bottom of my dart. Line up with that line an inch down. Tape. Okay, so see I fold, I drew a line below my dart an inch down and then I folded the line, the bottom box of my dart line down to meet that line. So now I've got a gap in the top of an inch and I just fill that in. Where's my scrap? I just cut it. No scrap of this behind. Tape, tape, tape. Take that scrap in there. Take your ruler. Those lines meet up. Cut. Oh, tape. More tape. My dart is moved. What'd that take me? Three minutes? So you can see how far down it went. One inch. Now I gotta move the other one. So now if I hold this up, shoulder to shoulder, I measured so I kind of knew where I was going. And this should point, the dart should point at the fullest part of your bust. We all know what happens if we have a dart that's in the wrong spot. That's when you feel like you're wearing a straight jacket. I'm just gonna tape this a little bit better. Okay, other side. Are. Now I always make sure I have my fabric. I never flip fabric. Everything's got to be going same direction. So if the top of my front is going this way, top of my back is going this way. Everything has shading. Learned that the hard way. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. We're not open yet. We're waiting for the governor to tell us we can open, but we are still taking orders over the phone all day long. Um, I ordered a ton, well, a ton, a ton for me, eight pieces of solids from Art Gallery. They have the most beautiful cotton lycras. And I ordered um, several colors so that we have I mean, I looked at my knit while I had so many prints. I'm using my pattern weights here. I love these pattern weights. Um, and I gotta make sure, now before I start, I wanna make sure I'm on the bottom. The front and the back have to be on the same stripe at the arm's eye point. And I was at the bottom of the stripe, the dark stripe. So I'm on the bottom of the dark stripe. I mean, this is a pretty small repeat. 
So you probably would never, I mean, I could stretch it to make it look like the sleeve match. You can always tell a t-shirt that somebody made because the stripes match. Okay, now your stripe won't match all the way up. Just not physically possible, but you can match your stripes up about halfway up the sleeve and get those to look nice. And always tell a t-shirt that was purchased because the stripes are all wonky. All right, and again, like I said, you're gonna check the bottom too. Make sure I'm on the fabric over here. Yes, yes, yes. A little weight down there. Okay, so I'm ready to cut. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I ordered some um, beautiful solids. I looked at my wall and there were so many prints, but sometimes I like to do a little mix and match with stuff. Like with this, I'm gonna do a um, contrast trim on the neckband. I'm using another print for that. I love doing that. I think it may just makes things look so custom. Um, with these nice four-way stretch lycras, I have some bamboo, organic bamboo lycras as well. Bamboo and lycra, they got a little, some cotton in them too. And those are very nice, a little bit lighter weight, very drapey, similar weight to a rayon lycra, which has a little bit more softness to it. These cotton lycras have a little bit more body. Um, both nice, I like them both. Um, the softer knits, if you look at Pamela's um, site, she has um, some tops that have uh, some pleating and some, I love the one that has the pleating in the back. It's got a yoke in the back and some draping and those softer knits work out so, so nicely for those because they're softer and they have, they can take the bulk. Sometimes these cotton lycras, they're nice for a more um, fitted style. I'm not going to determine my neckline right now. What I'll do is I'll just cut the, the neckline that um, the pattern came with. It's just a shallow, like a jewel neckline. I am going to scoop it, but I don't do that. I won't do that until I try it on. Um, you really have to, to do the steps. So you want to do your fitting as you go. Number one, the reason people get discouraged with sewing is because they make stuff and they cut a pattern and they sew it start to finish. Oh, it's done. And then they try it on. And oh my gosh, it doesn't fit. Or it doesn't fit the way you wanted it to or the way you thought it was going to. And if you had just taken the time to try it on in that process and say, oh wait, that shoulder needs to come up a little bit or I wanna take it in a little bit before I hem it, um, so much easier. You know. So how many times have people, they've made stuff got it all done and then too just too frustrated to take it apart and make the corrections so if you see I, if I was cutting from the other side it would be so much easier for me so just remember cut with your scraps to your left um, if you take the time to do the steps while you're doing it then you will save yourself so much frustration all right almost done so you see, cutting it single, I can get everything straight. I gotta mark my dart. So I just clipped the end of my dart leg at the side seam, both little marks. This one, a little clip at each dart leg, and then I'm gonna get a marking pen. Always test your marking pen before you use it. I will probably use the friction pen. The way I usually mark a dart is I'll put a pin down through the hole or the dot and then go to the back because you want the dart marked on the back and mark to the back. Pin through the dot. Pull it through, mark the back.
Now these go away with heat, so make sure you don't press this for any reason until you've got your dart stitched in, which will be the first thing I do. Take that pin out, back in my circle. Oh, a needle on my circle. But that was a needle I just took out of the machine. Okay, now we see if we have enough for sleeves. Fold that up in there. There's one, I think it's gonna be a short sleeve down at the bottom here. get it all right bottom and you want that arm side point to be at the bottom of a stripe so I'm gonna get this as long as I can and since I'm binding the sleeve instead of hemming it I am not concerned with hem allowance now, if you're hemming the sleeve, you need to make sure you have a hem allowance. I'm rolling it as far as I can because this stuff does curl. Oh my gosh, look at that. I'm gonna get the whole thing on there. All right, we got it. So I cut a yard of fabric. I can measure this after I wash it. I'll measure that centerpiece and see how much it shrunk. Now, Panama has a front and back sleeve. Generally speaking, knit t-shirt sleeves are the same front and back. So there's no difference. I'm gonna fold hers in half. I'm not exactly sure why. She does that? I'll have to ask her next time I talk to her. Talk to her just before we shut down and all her events had canceled. So we're gonna try to do a virtual event with her. I don't know what it'll be, but it's something fun. I'm gonna cut the bottom edge. Of that sleeve. So if your sleeve has a front and a back, you gotta make sure and slip your, flip your sleeve pattern over when you cut your second. So I'm gonna fold the sleeve at the notch and see, as I suspected, no difference. So don't worry about front and back too much. Just make sure you're on the same stripe going all the way across. Weight it down. And cut. So I'm gonna give myself a notch at the sle sleeve cap, the center notch. I'm not gonna mark the front and back because I know that this front and back are the same. So no real reason for me to do much with that. I know how to set in a sleeve. If you feel like you need that guidance, go ahead. Flip your sleeve and mark your notches. All right, two sleeves cut. They're little sleeves, little baby sleeves. It's also cute to do the sleeves out of different fabric. So if you have two that look nice together, um, I have a stripe. I have uh, two stripes that are the same color. One's a larger scale, one's a smaller scale. And how cute to do like the larger scale on the body and the small scale on the, on the sleeve, maybe the trim, when we do our little tour of the knit wall, I'll point those out to you. Um, boy, I didn't have much left over here. Let me measure this and see how much this shrunk. Maybe an inch. Maybe an inch. So we're good. So our yard just got the mini sleeve. 
So out of this pattern, I probably would say give yourself a little extra, depending on how long you want your sleeve, if you're tall. I didn't lengthen this pattern at all. So note to self, cut a little more fabric next time. It was just a little tight. I mean, I got it, but if it had shrunk an inch more, I wouldn't have gotten my sleeve. All right, I'm trying to clean up after myself. All righty. Now, what I have to do next is, um, in her instructions, she calls for uh, tapes, seam tapes. Um, so she puts stay tape, the woven stay tape goes in the shoulder, the knit stay tape goes in the neck. So I need to apply those. Now, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are really nice for very lightweight knits. For these, I could probably get away without it. So let me, um, because I'm gonna put them together in a serger, I am going to apply it to the neck edge and to the shoulder. Um, if you are using a sewing machine to sew this t-shirt together, absolutely don't skip that step. Um, if you're using a rayon or a bamboo knit or a lightweight um, jersey, don't skip that step because these will make the finished product so, so nice. Um, but for this weight, I could potentially skip the shoulder seam just because I know my, my serger will control the stretch of that shoulder. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm gonna put it on there. So I need to go to my iron. I will find my tape and I'll bring you over to the iron. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. So I have my woven stay tape. Now, this stuff can get a little unruly. See what happened to this one? Kind of came off the roll a little bit. Um, if you want to roll it around a um, piece of cardboard or something, it, it looks kind of, this was a natural, usually we carry it in white and um, black. And this is the woven, so it doesn't have any give, all right? And then, or very little, and that's gonna stabilize my shoulders. And you can feel the glue side is a little bit rougher. Now, I put the stay tape on the back. You only need to put it on one side. You don't need to put it on both. My little guys. Now, the one thing you need to have when you sew is a good iron. All right. Get those lots of steam. Now, I would recommend a press cloth if you are not sure what side is the sticky side and what side is the non-sticky side. So, I have seen people iron this to their iron. So, press cloth is a good idea. I just don't have one sitting right here, and I know which side is the sticky side. So I'm just gonna press it right there. So there's my shoulder seam. Have a little bit of stay tape on them, all right? And always keep these with their instructions so you know what you have. This is the woven. And here's the messy knit. Now this has to go all the way around. And what'll happen here is you just got to find the end. This could be my job for tonight. I'm sitting in front of the TV, winding this around something else. And I can feel the glue side. I'm going to start on this side so I can kind of walk it around. Now, I've got this set on high steam. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. The nice thing about these reliable irons is that they have a sensor. Oh, it needs, iron. It needs water. Um, they have a sensor in the handle. Let me get some water. So that they can, they know when you're holding it.
Okay, that, that sound is the steam generator. So the difference between these reliable irons and your Rowentas, your Olissos, you know, I don't even count, like, what is the other kind? Sunbeams, I don't know what else there is. Those are the only two that I've ever used for sewing. Um, is that most irons take water and drip it onto the hot sole plate to make the steam, right? And what happens to like the Rowentas and stuff? They start to spit because they get that buildup. Um, what the Reliable does, it has a steam, which is what that noise was you just heard. It's got a steam generator built right into it. I'm gonna trim this off so I don't end up pressing this entire piece to my shirt. Okay. Um, so you see when I pick it up, it starts to steam immediately because of that sensor in the handle. So I don't have to be pushing a button. This is low steam. You can steam something upright with this guy. It will steam at any angle. But it's got a steam generator built into it, so it's creating the steam and then pumping it out. So as opposed to dripping water onto a soap plate and then trying to make it steam, it's creating steam and then pumping it out. So you don't get that spitting that you get with um, the other kind of iron. So here's my front. That was my back. It's just to stabilize. Okay. So see what I've got there? Got a little row of tape right there. And this is the knit stay tape, so it's got stretch. So, all right, so there's your, your knit. Okay. That's all the pressing we need to do for right now. Now, you know what I'm gonna have to do though is I'm probably gonna change that neckline, so I'm gonna have to put more stay tape on it. Drats. Back will stay the same. Front is gonna be a little bit lower. So I'll put, I'll have to apply some new, oh boy. See, everyone does this sort of thing. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, now we're at our serger. I'll thread it right in front of you because it's just not scary. Can you see everything here? Let's see. Got an extra light here. Hopefully that's not gonna mess us up. I love the slimline light. It's got the LEDs in it. So we're gonna just thread this serger. This is the Triumph. And if you're sewing clothes, oh, won't fall over me. If you're sewing clothes, you're gonna have a serger at some point. Sooner than later, as far as I'm concerned, is better. But sergers seem so scary, but they're not really, especially when you have one that's self-threading. But, so you just put the thread in the hole, and push the button, and it spits the, the loop of thread out over here. Sergers don't run like sewing machines. They don't have a bobbin. They have looper threads that run along the edge of the fabric so they, they don't ever penetrate. So these two that I'm just threading, they'll, they'll wrap the edge of the fabric top and bottom. They will never penetrate the fabric. Um, and then you have needles that will catch those loopers and hold them in place. That's why you can get so much stretch in a serge seam. So I can get, um, I can sew leggings on my serger and I can this is so I'm threading the needles now. Um, I can get them to stretch 100%. So you will never hear a seam pop. Hey, Julie. Julie, oh, yes. do you want to turn the air conditioning on? It's getting hot in here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although we're supposed to get storms today. I know, that's what. And then it's going to get. Be down too. Cool. It's, it's going to get cool. Oh, really? Yeah, I think high is 60 tomorrow. Oh. Maybe 70. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a super thunder sweater on Okay, so we are now going to thread these needles. Da -da -da. 
Um, the Triumph has air needle threaders, which you just push the button and it pulls the thread. Through. Get it kind of close. And it pulls it through. And there it is. Get it close to it. There's a little guide that they give you for this. But after you've done it, it's kind of stick it over there and it takes it right through. And you can thread these surges in any sequence and it will chain every time. Your stitch length on your serger. So if you're gonna sew on a sewing machine um, for this, you're gonna to want to have your stitch length at about three. Um, I'm gonna show you in the serger, but any step that we're doing can also be done on the sewing machine. I don't wanna discourage you from sewing knits on your sewing machine. Let me get here, there we go, is that better? Um, I don't wanna discourage you, you can do it. Um, the, the longer stitch length will give you, don't use a stretch stitch, it'll just stretch your fabric right out. Um, the difference with the serger is that it has this differential, differential feed function, so I can turn it up and it will kind of compress the fabric a little bit so that it doesn't stretch out. Um, what you're gonna wanna do in your sewing machine is use a longer stitch, so three, if you don't, if it doesn't wanna feed the knit really well. Um, the FOFs have a top feed system, so it feeds everything through nicely, but sometimes machines tend to stretch it in front of the foot so um, you might have to do, go to three and a half make sure you're getting a nice long stitch then always look at your seam make sure it's not spreading but um, you should be good but the most important thing is if you um, use the seam tapes if you're using the sewing machine for sure use the seam tapes and get a good quality knit um, the times people have tr troubles is when they buy yucky knit from that J store my pins, sorry, that stretch and never go back. It's so disappointing. Okay, so I am going to surge a shoulder seam. Oh, let's see, I didn't even look at matching the shoulder. Oh, look at that. Sometimes you can match the, the pattern going up and down. I didn't even think about that this time. Now I'm gonna pin it, but I'm gonna pin it this way with the head coming this way so I don't cut the head off. I don't wanna surge over my pin. You can use clips. I, I don't use clips when I'm sewing clothing. The fabric is too soft. Um, I want these nice glass head pins. Oh, we got some pretty ones in. Where are they? Blue ones. They're silk pins, so they're ultra fine, so they go through any fabric very nicely. Um, you don't want to put a pin into a nice knit and feel it kind of grab. That's a bad sign. You want to get good pins. Because this, with these glass heads, then I can also press over them and not get a melted glob of plastic on my fabric, which is disappointing. It, to say the least. So I've got my differential feed set up at about 1.3 because I've got that stay tape in here. I don't have to worry too much about it growing. But as, anytime I'm stitching across the stretch, I'm going to turn my differential feed up a little bit. Quarter inch seam. My stitch length is set just under three. So there's my shoulder seam. And there's that stay tape. Keeps everything nice and neat. Okay, so you still have a little give in that shoulder seam, but it's not going to get stretchy, stretchy. All right? Now, what I also want to do is I am going to serge that other shoulder seam, and then we're going to try this on and do the fitting. And then I will have to take a little bit of that seam out. I could just baste this, but it's not that hard to take a little bit of that serge seam out. I can take the whole thing out super quick. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm pinning that other shoulder seam. I'm gonna stitch that one. Because when I do my neck trim, I'm gonna show you a fun neck trim method. Take that pin out. Here's 
my other shoulder seam and I am going to press the seam open. To, I'm not, not open to the back. Press it to the back. Pressing is the most important part of sewing. If you don't press, you will look so homemade. I'm going to cut those threads off so I don't find them someplace down the road, sticking out of a seam. Not too close because I need to get secured somewhere first. Okay, so there is my neck edge. Okay, now what I want to do is two things. I'm going to, I'm actually going to stitch my, I'm going to try this on real quick and check my shoulder size. So if I lay this over like this, oh, my nose is so itchy today and get that right where I want it. I can see that my shoulder looks good. Okay, so it's actually laying right over the seam of this t-shirt, which I like the way the shoulder fits. Okay, so that's gonna be, my shoulder's gonna be good. So I don't have to take any adjustment on my shoulder, because I could take it in a little bit, all right? Can't really make it bigger, but I could take it in. If it was hanging over, then I could trim it back and regrade that armhole a little bit, and the sleeve will still fit, it's fine. Unless, unless you're going, you know, two inches in, it'll be fine. But the other thing I want to do right now is judge my neck line, okay? So I am going to put a pin in where I feel like I, everyone has an idea of where they want their neck to be, their neckline, okay? And I don't look good with this high, and I don't like it too low, so I kind of fall in the middle, all right? So right about there. So I'm going to regrade this front neck, and like I said, I knew... I was gonna have to redo the seam tape. So I'm gonna do all that and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, done. So I have reapplied seam tape to my scooped up neck, all right? So I've got seam tape on the front and back, ooh, fly. And now we're gonna go, I'm gonna actually do my darts next. Okay, we're gonna do our darts. So. Let's hope we didn't press those marks out when I press that neck. Nope, I can see it. So I've got my dot of my dart there, and I've got my two clips of the dart legs. Tiny little clips here. See the little clips? One, two. So bring those clips together. In. And then go to the dot. And at the dot, and then make sure it lays nice and smooth. Okay, so there's my dart leg. So I'm going to start at the clip, and oh, this is a nice um, trick that Pamela taught us to pin right at the dot. And wrap your thread around that, that pin at the dot. And that gives your thread gives you a line to sew on. to the edge, just so super close to the edge. And then come back 
and do a little stitch right in the so you come back and do a little stitch right in the body of the dart and that secures that thread so you don't have to do any kind of tie off And you can cut your so you have a little so you come and you stitch really close to the edge then you come back and stitch a little bit right in the body of the dart so that ties it off and you'll always get a nice you'll never get a tuck on your dart now I'm gonna press these darts down you can tell which way they want to go because if I pressed it up see what happens if I press it down it's smooth with the edge, okay? Now, I wanna get my ham. I'm gonna show you how to press a dart. I have my ham. I'm a little smaller now, which is fine. You don't need huge ham. Pressing tools are so fun. Lay your, because a dart's curved, because you're curved. So you need a curved area to press this on. So lay it over there. This is where the steam is huge. Hover over that dart and then give it one of these. Okay, can you see what I'm doing? Hover over it with steam and then press it with your hand. And it just comes out perfect every time. It's awesome. Wow, I could have done the serger dart. Pamela showed us that serger dart and that's in her book too her sewing techniques book, which is a really nice one. Um, I even have it on her, on her website. If not, I'll have her send me a video. Okay, so I'm pressing my dart down. I'm not pressing it with the iron, I'm pressing it with my hand. Okay, so now you've got your dart nice and smooth, okay? You don't want to have a big pucker at the end of your dart. That's very interactive. Don't do that. Okay, so my dart's in. My shoulder seams are in, but I'm gonna rip a little bit of it out because I'm gonna show you how to do a really fun little neck finish. This is the neck band finish that I have done forever. It's called French trim. I have to rip a little bit of the shoulder seam out. Now to rip a, uh, um, serge seam out. What you don't want to do is take a seam ripper and run it underneath those looper stitches. No, no. So you see these straight lines here and here? Can you see those? There's two rows of them. You want to get your seam ripper, or I've got my little kais that I can use, under there, and I can just pull it, clip it, and then there's two, so there's two needle threads. Clip it. I only want to go out a little bit, so I'm not pulling the whole thing. I could rip that whole seam out in no time. Pull that other one and see I've got both needle seams out and see what happens? The looper threads come right along after it. So now I've got that ripped out. Super easy. Cut those close. So now I've got, eh, you know what, maybe I'll rip the whole thing out and that way I'll, I'll have to join those up. So just get a hold of that needle thread, pull. They usually come out, especially when you're sewing on a knit because you lengthen your stitch a little bit. Not always that easy, but there. That serge seam is gone. Nope, that's great. Okay, so now I have one shoulder seam sewn. I am going to Put a neck band on. So what I do is, for this French trim, I cut a trim piece. This was two inches wide. That's plenty wide, okay? You don't need it too, super wide. I mean, a, a, a neck band that you um, fold in half and stitch and, you know, you quarter it. I think that's what is in the pattern. Quarter it and then turn it up. That's nice too. But I just like the way this looks. I think it looks a little bit more, um, finished for me I don't know a little more ready to wear and I decided I wanted to use 
this um, circular pattern for the trim on this. Now what I had to decide is do I want to have trim that looks like little scallops or a trim that looks like little smiles. I think I'm going scallops. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this band on. I don't cut it to size. Make sure your stitch length is at least a three. I lay it in there. Quarter inch seam allowance, a healthy quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. I just want to make sure I want the way that's the way I want it. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Healthy quarter inch seam allowance. And let's get you in here. Okay. What I do is I cut a piece that's plenty long, all right, and I keep tension on it. See what I'm doing? Can you, uh, let me get you a little higher. Sorry if I'm making you queasy here. My hands aren't in your way. Okay. So I keep tension on it until it cups my finger just a tiny bit. And I stitch with a quarter, healthy quarter inch. So I use the edge of my zero foot, which is a th actually three eighths. Keep those edges together. Now this is the back neck edge. So you don't have to stretch a ton because it's not a much, not much curve. If you're doing a V-neck, you can do this a V-neck this way. I'll show you how you finish that. You just need to keep tension on it. If you don't stretch it a little tiny bit, it will cup, it'll um, bow out from you. What you want to do is create a little tension on it, especially where there's a curve, so that it cups your body. It hugs your body. Make sure your seam allowance stays towards the back. You see, I'm just making it just a little bit of tension on it, so it kind of cups my finger. Okay, now I'm getting down to my front neck edge, and it has got a deeper curve. So I will stretch a little bit more. Not necessarily yet, because I'm not, I'm just kind of on this, this opening edge of that neck edge. But you see, I can see I'm getting to this curve area. So when I get down there, whereas now I'm just kind of, again, cupping my finger, when I get down there, I have to stretch a little bit more or else it will not hug my body. It will stand out. This is not rocket science. It's just kind of a rough estimation of how much you, know, you get. You know, you'll know if you get to the other end and you turn it around and it's standing out. You're like, oh, I didn't stretch that quite enough. Or if it's got puckers in it, you say, oh, I stretched that too much. Guess what you do then? You rip it on, do it again. No big deal. Ripping is part of sewing. Okay, so I'm coming around to the shoulder seam. Okay, so I have a neck band. I'm gonna move you back a little bit again. I have a neck band attached from the front shoulder to the back shoulder. I need to sew the shoulder seam. But right now, I just kinda wanna look at it and make sure, so when I wrap that around, It'll be a nice, narrow, clean finish. It's gonna be cute. Yeah, I like it. Um, so what you need to do now is, and you can usually tell right now if you didn't stretch it enough. So if I wrap this front neck, I can see that it's gonna, it's gonna lay flat, okay? If it was kind of doing this sort of thing, it would be take it off and do it again, okay? Now I could have done that step with my serger. I usually do that with my sewing machine because I feel like I have a little more control with my sewing machine to do that. Because um, this next step, you have options. If you have a cover stitch, now we're gonna do, I'm gonna do the shoulder seam with my serger. 
but if you have a cover stitch machine, the top stitching on that neck edge looks really, really nice if you cover stitch it. Um, and you can straddle the seam with that double cover stitch. So you have two rows of straight stitch. I've got one here I'll show you. Yes. Um, I think for this one, I'm going to do the stitching on the sewing machine because it is um, an accent trim piece. I don't really want any other detail on it, like top stitching. Um, I think I got enough going on with these circles. <laughs> so right now what I'm doing is I'm repinning that shoulder seam that I ripped open. And see, since I didn't cut that to size, I've got little tails hanging off there. So I can just trim those off now because I know they're the right size. And you just make it a continuation of your shoulder seam. Okay, and I'm just gonna search that. I'll be right back. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna sh just do a quick press on that shoulder seam again. Oh, I can't say enough about those irons. Um, one of my customers just bought one of their big steam operating, the big tank, and I have to ask her how that's going. She was super excited. So now I have my neck, my shoulder seams are both sewn. Now it's time to finish my neck edge. So I'm going to wrap that around. And I am going to stitch in the ditch, right in between, right into that seam. There's a foot that we have um, that works great. You can um, put the, a blade right in that seam. Um, check if your machine has that foot. Um, there's a lot of them. I don't know what the Baby Lock has one as well. Um, the Faf is called a narrow edge foot. I wouldn't use a quilting foot, the stitch in the ditch foot, because um, I guess you could. The narrow edge foot is my preference, and it will guide your stitching right in that ditch. Now, let me show you. So this one, we cover stitched. And so you see there's a line of straight stitching on either side of that um, seam line. So the cover stitch has two, two needles. So what I did was I centered the stitching right on that seam. So one's on the band and one's on the shirt. Um, it's a nice finishing detail. It really is. And then there's your cover stitch hem on the sleeve. So it really just kind of pulls everything together. And then on the bottom, I cover stitched. Um, I think I'll probably cover stitch the hem on this one as well. The, the sleeve on this top is going to be bound with the same trim as the neck edge. So we'll see how it develops. Right now I'm just going to top stitch because I don't think that I want the cover stitch on this one. Like I said, because I've got enough going on. I've got a trim here. I don't think I need anything else going on. So I'm going to change my foot. I'm going to lengthen my stitch out a little bit more actually to three and a half. So, oh, where's my foot? Not in here, let me find it. There it is. Okay. See this foot? It's got a little blade down the middle, right there. And you can put that right in the seam. Now, all the fabrics are different. You will want to check. You might be, have to, that's why I like this foot as opposed to a stitch in the ditch foot, which is a single hole foot that um, the quilters use. Don't you? Make sure your seam allowances don't flip. And I don't usually pin this. I'll, I'll just do it as I go. I'll wrap it as I go. But if you are uncomfortable with that, you can pin the entire thing and measure. I've done a million of these, so I can just eyeball it, OK? So I'm going to put this in there. And I'm going to put my foot down, and I'm going to make sure that needle goes down right where I want it. Because with a stitch in the ditch foot, because it's it's not a single whole foot, it's got an opening for nine millimeter stitches, I can take a look and see where that needle's falling 
and I can scooch it to the right or the left a little bit. So if it's not falling right as close as I want to the ditch, I can move it over. And so see what I do is I kind of feel up here and I make sure that seam allowance is all tucked in and I look at the trim band and make sure it looks like it's the same width all the way along. And I've got this little circular pattern, so that helps me too. And I just stitch right in the ditch. Take a look, I need to go, I think I need to go to the left a little bit. Because I don't want it to hit the band, so I'm gonna rip that out. I'm gonna move my needle just a couple stitches to the left. Because I don't wanna hit the band. It, that is a nice look, I have done that before. And I'll show you, I've got a dress over there where I cover stitched right on the band with three rows of cover stitching, it's kinda of cute. So let's see where we are now. That looks perfect. So I went two notches to the left and now my needle's falling just where I want. Because with a knit, especially when you're turning this curve, it can be, it can change. So you need to make the allowance. That's the beautiful thing about having a machine that's got needle positions, is you can make the change. And I'm just wrapping that seam allowance, or that trim band around the seam allowance. You wanna make sure you don't cut your trim piece too narrow, or else you can really give yourself a headache. Um, I've gotten to the point at times where I had maybe an inch and a half, inch and a quarter left of fabric to get my trim band out. And boy, that was not fun. Trying to turn that and make sure it caught and all that stuff. Now this is not gonna be a double turn. There's gonna be a ride in the inside. This is a knit, it's not going anywhere. You're gonna get your nice scissors and trim that raw edge close. As long as your seam allowance is all tucked up in there, you are gonna be fine. It's not gonna go anywhere. I love this neck finish, it's a little dressier. Not, you know, just not as casual as a, as a crew neck, you know, with that band that you turn up. And you just go all the way around. So you get back to the other shoulder seam where you started. You know, it's good to give it a little tug as you go, just to build a little stretch into that seam. But you have that um, stay tape in there, so it's going to keep it from getting distorted or stretched out. That's the problem most people have with knits that don't have a serger is they just grow and grow stretch in front of the foot and I'm just running my finger along there but like I said you can easily go through there and pin this whole thing okay then cut your threads close nothing says homemade like threads hanging out There's your neck band. Now, until I trim this, it's gonna look a little weird. So see, it looks kind of strange. It's kind of bowing out. Let me trim it and press it, and then you'll see what the finished look is. So these are the, she makes her stuff this iridescent color. And the nice thing about that is you can, you hold them like this, and trim it, it won't cut, it won't cut the under layer. So if you're afraid you're gonna cut your under layer, you can get super close and it won't cut something you don't wanna cut. Oh yeah, those were nice. I'm not a huge fan of duckbill scissors for cutting actual appliques, but this, I use um, VP45s for my embroidery appliques. But this, for this application, these are amazing. Look at that. So nice and close. Nice. 
I'm gonna give it a press and I'll show you what it looks like. There it is. I like those little circles on there. That's cute. But you see how that's gonna hug my, hug my neck or hug my body right there instead of bowing out. Perfect, I like it, okay? So that adds a nice little detail. So then you're just gonna set in your sleeve, and I know my shoulder's good because we tried it on. So let's come over to the serger and we'll set our sleeve. Remember that notch I gave myself at the top of the sleeve cap? I'm gonna match that to my shoulder seams. So we've got my notch, right sides together. Make sure that seam allowance stays to the back. Okay. So what I do when I set a sleeve in flat is I pin the, the sleeve cap. I pin the arms I point at the side seam. that stripe should match. And I pin the other arms I point at the side seam. And then the sleeve looks like, it's weird because one bows out and one bows in, but then it sets in, it'll set in perfect. You can start from, I usually will pin it one or two more times. If you start at the side seam and start working in, it should match up perfectly. And then when you get to the cap, it just kind of lays down in there. It's like a little miracle. Okay. Just because of the shape of the sleeve cap, it can only match up a little bit. Straight, make sure I've got that stripe match on the other side. And another sleeve. my sleeve. It sets right in. Okay. And now I'm going to go and press, well, I'm going to set the other one in, and then we'll press both of them. You really need to press that seam. Otherwise it will never really sit nicely. Okay. Time to press my sleeve. And I use this tailor board for this because you can kind of set it up like this. You can put your sleeve over it. You want to press that seam towards the sleeve. So you want to get that sleeve cap kind of there. And see how that goes right around it? I love this for that. show you both before and after pressing is just why the pressing is so important and then you can lay this up like this and kind of get this other edge which might be hard to get flat on your ironing board but when you do this it's easier because you've got that surface 
Also has a little point, um, this guy. You can take that off. It comes with, you, you can get the pads. I think I got them with the pads included, which is good for this side, but for the other side, it's a nice um, point presser for collars. Get right into the collars. Okay. So there's my sleeve. I'll get a little more. See how that steams as soon as I grab it? I don't have to do that button or anything. Okay. So there's my sleeve cap pressed. See how nice that falls? And there's the one that's not pressed. And see how that's got that wavy, wrinkly look? Not good. Not what you're going for. So I'm gonna do the sleeve trim real quick. Same as the um, neck trim, except for it's going along the bottom of the sleeve. Oh, I hope I have enough. Uh, it's gonna be close. I'm gonna try it. I do one, then we'll see where we are. machine um, came out it has extra feed dogs in front of the foot so it handles knits so much better because it keeps everything feeding right in instead of sitting in front of the foot stretching I'm sure everyone's seen that before um, the icon line really they did a great job I'll just keep it taut. No real stretching here because it's just the bottom of the sleeve. There's no real, just a gentle curve. If you're doing a longer sleeve, this is the mini sleeve, so extra mini because of the amount of fabric I had. Um, if you're doing a regular sleeve, I don't think I'd do this treatment on it. This is cute on a shorter sleeve. But on the longer sleeve, I don't, I don't think I would do it. Okay. I'm not trimming that perfectly yet. I'm just cutting it so it's not in my way. Now I have to do the side seam. And then we're going to do another fit. Okay. Okay, so now you know what we have again. That seam between the trim <laughs> and the sleeve. Now... I'll be as fussy about this because it's going to be under my arm. But I'm going to give it my best shot to match that. So again, I put that pin in with the head coming away from where the serger is going to be sewing and the tip away from the edge so it doesn't cut it. I cannot wait to get a haircut, people. Oh. Told my hairdresser let the people that color their hair in first because I know it's been crazy for everyone I don't really I can I can handle cutting my bangs one more time but it will be nice to get a haircut okay now when you sew your side seam make sure that dart stays down because I always sew from hem to uh, sleeve just the way I was taught. So from bottom to top. And my stripe should match if I cut it right. Yep. So if you're sewing this on a sewing machine, you are going to use a long straight stitch and then you can do a double stitch of a little, the skinniest, tiny zigzag you can, you can make your machine do. If you want, you can do both both stitches, both seams can be that, just that wobble stitch, just the tiniest little zigzag you can do. You don't want a big zigzag, because then you'll see it. But, um, I would, 
definitely do two rows of stitching though, because when you stretch, you have that, that safety stitch in there. And I still have my differential feet turned up because I'm even with these four way stretch knits, they're stretched along the up and down too. So you gotta have it controlling that stretch a little bit. It keeps it from looking, um, from growing. Okay, I'm at the underarm seam. And I'm just gonna let that underarm seam come towards the sleeve, which is the way we pressed it. And then I'm gonna come up through that trim band Seam. Make sure I don't hit that pin. Pull that out. Press it over. Okay. Side seam number one. And my stripes match. Nice. Okay. Side seams are both sewn. And with that trim band, did the same thing, just went up and sewed it. It's still not finished yet. It's like the neck band. We sew, remember we sewed, sewed the shoulder seam and then wrapped the trim band around after the shoulder seam was done. It's the same thing with the side seam when you trim your sleeve. Um, but I gotta try it on first. I wanna make sure everything fits. You don't wanna um, hem it and finish the sleeve if you're gonna have to take it in a little bit. So let me go put it on and I'll show you how to fit. It could come in at the waist right here. I don't want it super tight, cause you know, that corona spread, yikes. Um, but I feel like it could come in a little bit. So I'm gonna take it in. This is what you wanna do before you hem it. You know, I'm only gonna have a skinny little hem, so it's not gonna get any shorter, really. But I want, and it's got kind of a shirt tail hem on it, but I'm gonna take it in the dart just about three inches below the dart I'm just gonna nip it in a little bit uh, maybe an inch on either side and I think that'll give it a little bit more shape you, know, you gotta look in the mirror you gotta say what do you think and I think that'll be cute yeah cute and the darts right in the right spot so the point of the darts pointing right at the fullest part of my bust so that was good. Sleeve, shoulder looks good. It's up under my arm, which I like. I like it tight to my arm, so you don't get any. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, oh, I love this fabric, it's so cute. So I can use to lose a little bit of the hip as well. So I think I'll do, I always just kind of pinch it in and see how much I can do an inch at the spot kind of all the way down yeah okay so just look at it you just kind of I usually do like this I pull it in and say oh yeah I like the way that looks better or you know maybe I like the way I like it to be a little blousey but usually my t-shirts I want to have fitted so take it in hem it up now to fit it I'm just gonna take it back to the serger I'm not gonna um, recut it I will mark it with a mark with my friction pen but I don't want too much out of the side seam I don't think um, or down at the bottom you don't want it to be too tight you don't want it to be even like this that's not a good that's not a good look um, but up here for sure okay okay so I marked on one side how much I wanted to take off with my friction pen, just kind of eyeballed it. But now I'm gonna take the piece that, it, and I took it to the serger and trimmed it that way, stitched it on the line. But so both sides are the same. I'm gonna kind of use that piece that I cut off as my guide. So I lay that piece on here and use that as my pattern. You see this friction pen is really nice marks on the fabric, I can see it. So that's the line that I followed on the other one. That's the line I'm gonna follow on this one, okay? So I'm trimming off about mm, an inch or so at the waist and then a little bit less. So really two inches, because I'm doing the front and the back. 
and that just gives it a little more shape for me. So now I can come to my serger and I can just guide. There's marks on these feet, on the foot where the needle's gonna stitch. I just put a needle mark for the left needle right along that green line. Now I'm going to press my side seams to the back and we're ready to hem. I'll finish the sleeve band and hem. There's a mark from that friction pen that I marked my fabric with. We'll get erased with meat. Bonus. Okay. All those serving threads so they don't get caught anywhere I don't want them to. Now all I have to do is the sleeve band. I'm going to turn it around and stitch in the ditch like I did with the neck and then trim it. And then we'll do a hem. I'm just going to convert this over to cover stitch. So I can do my hem quick. So scary. So they move the needles forward. Let me thread it. Do a narrow cover hem. So I'm using the far left and the center needle um, just because it's gonna be a skinny hem anyway. It doesn't need a wide stitch. So we're gonna use the dark gray thread. We need three of them, two for the needles, one for the looper. Now, if you're doing this in a sewing machine, you could do a twin needle, or you could do that little wobble stitch that I talked about. Um, for the side seams for your seaming, you could use that little wobble stitch. That works pretty well for hemming knits. And there's a hem tape, which I am sadly out of. that you can fuse your hem up and then stitch it. But I don't have any. It's on back order. If you have them at home, they're the, um, you know, I showed you these, the Sokeezy. It's the green one. So if you have that, you can fuse your um, hem up and then stitch it. Just make sure that you set enough for threading so I can thread my cover stitch looper. Um, if you're going to use that, make sure you give it lots of steam so that it in integrates itself into the fabric and then you can block it. Once you're done, you can block it because if it stretches out a little bit, it has a thermal memory and you just steam over it, that um, it will like suck itself back up. Which one is this? This is my right needle. I usually get my needle threads right into place. Those out of there. And then I thread everything, both needles together. So having a cover stitch machine is like having two machines in one. 
So they, on the baby locks, the functions don't really overlap at all. So it's an eight thread serger, but you're probably never gonna use all eight threads. And I almost never use more than four threads. So I won't, I don't generally do a chain stitch with an overlock, um, which is the, kind of what you see in um, ready to wear menswear stuff for a five eight seam allowance. You can do a five eight seam allowance with a serger. It's just, I don't like the construction with the chain stitch because for me, I mean, we all know what a chain stitch is like. It's like a dog food bag stitch. And I don't find that to be, if you get the right thread, your, your seam is gone. So I construct with the four thread overlock and then use chain stitch for finishing. That's just my needle threader. So I am ready to cover stitch. And I'm gonna set my stitch length at about three and a half. And I'm gonna eyeball this. So I turn it up. It, it's gotta be real skinny at the, where the hem comes up like this, at that side seam. It can't get too much turned under there. And then you can go out to, I'm gonna do about um, a half inch hem, maybe five eighths. And just turn it up. And what I usually suggest is find a spot especially when you do something skinny like this, find a spot and guide by it. And don't try to catch the edge inside the post from up to it. I mean, you know, for new sewers, yes, measure and press this hem up. I'm doing this long enough that I can pretty much eyeball it. have a stripe to use. to the other side seam, you're gonna get it skinny again, because that's all you can do. Just make sure you catch it with your stitching, kind of closer to the edge. that hem out to be a little bit wider as you come around down by the front. You can ease it back out to your half inch, five eighths, whatever it was you were doing. And you can go wider, you can go do up to a, whatever hem you want. you're gonna do a wide hem, I would straighten out that shirt tail hem on this pattern. So that you're not trying to manipulate something that's just not gonna go. If 
you're doing a cover stitch and you feel like once you get to the end, you take a look at it and say, oh, hmm, I could have been straighter there. Before you take it out of the machine, take a look and see how, you know, did it catch everywhere? Do you look pretty straight? Looks pretty good. If there's a problem, when you take this out, if you get the right thread, you can pull the whole thing right out. Once you know you're good, then you carefully take your fabric out, cut your threads long, and then you've gotta secure that cover stitch. Because right now, if I start pulling on this bottom thread, the whole thing will unravel. So I am going to carefully find that thread that will pull and loop it through. Itself. It's only when you don't want to pull it out that it comes out super easy. So I just loop that through and then you can cut it pretty close. And then you can cut the front threads really close too. Once you're not knotted, you can cut them. Okay, done, done, let me press my hem. Now, if you've got too much excess on the inside of that hem, I never try to catch the raw edge on a knit. It just, it doesn't really matter and it just will stress you out. Um, but if you find that you've got too much excess on the inside, which that is not bad, um, then you can trim it because that raw edge is not going anywhere. But I try to leave like a quarter of an inch. All right, I believe all she wrote. Cute. There's that little sleeve trim. And my little neck trim. Very cute. With a little pair of cream jeans for summer, maybe. Or a pair of black capris. Eh, fun. So I'm going to try and get to another um, project doing the same, using the same pattern. Um, let me just show you a few things over here real quick. If you wanna sew knits, I know it looks like it says something backwards. That says knits. This is a great book. It gives you lots of instructions on how to deal with knits. And then there are a million t-shirt patterns. T-shirt dress t-shirt with a, um, this one has a, like a boat neck and a, um, it's not, this is called a saddle shoulder. That's kind of cute. Another t-shirt with a real cute little sleeve treatment. Um, this is a fun one too with a v-neck, boat neck, scoop neck. There's another Christine Johnson that has a funnel neck. Probably not great for now, but. And then Pamela also has a t-shirt dress. And there's another t-shirt dress. This make a cute little um, swing top too. So there's lots of options. Lots and lots of options. I was gonna show you real quick. If you wanna do a V-neck, you can V this for this kind of trim treatment. And then when you're done, all you do, you just cut the, um, the V Finish the trim just like we did here, and at the end, you just sew a tiny little seam at the tip from the that stitching line and cut a little stitch a little wedge out, and it makes the perfect little mini V-neck. It works out great. So, all right, thanks for watching. All right, so watch for my next video on the, the pattern hack off of the T-shirt that we'll use for a woven for a fun little summer. Um, something something. I'm not going to tell you. It's a surprise. See you later.